of control. You're confused. But don't worry. Don't worry. Well, listen, this is the day the Lord has made. It's a little different than we anticipated. It's a little different than we expected, but we still rejoice and we are glad in it. 
because God is still God no matter what's going on. Absolutely, Bishop. But we're glad to be in the house. We're glad to have this platform where we can worship in spirit and in truth no matter where you are. So listen, here's what I need you to do. I need everybody who is thankful for another day. Y'all playing like y'all in the club. I need y'all to give me some good church in I feel like I'm in the club. This New Year's Eve, I need y'all to rev a brother up over there. So listen, wherever you are, I want you. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, that's what, that what I want. Wherever you are, I want you right now in your house. We expected, we registered almost 1,000 people. And we expected 1,000 people to be in the house. But listen, we've discovered over the last two years that we know how to make our house a sanctuary and give God the praise. There are some of you that are watching me right now. You have been through hell in 2021. You've dealt with COVID. You've dealt with crazy work environment. You've dealt with sickness. You've dealt with all kinds of struggles, and yet here you are on the last day of the year, in your right mind, breath in your body. You ought to just give God, listen, stand up wherever you are. If you're home, if you're on your job, pull over. If you're on 95, 10, Golf Air, Reebok, South, wherever you are, I need you to pull over and just think of the good of God I need you to pull over and just thank God that all year he kept you he blessed you he never left you he made ways for you he opened doors for you he dried your tears he regulated your mind he fixed your broken heart he kept your family he kept your children he kept your marriage he kept you and you ought to just give God a good praise wherever you are right Right now, you ought to write in the comments, I made it. That's all I want you to write. I made it. That's all I want you to do. I made it. I made it. It was rough. The devil tried to take me out. The devil did his best to destroy me. The devil did his best to depress me. The devil did his best to discourage me. The devil did his best to take me out. But after everything I dealt with this year, to give God the glory because there's still breath in my body so wherever you are let everything that has breath come on right in your house I don't care if your children looking at you crazy I don't care if your spouse looking at you like they want you to sit down I want you to think of how good God's been and I want you right in your house to act like you're in this house and begin to open up your mouth and bless the Lord with the fruit of your lips because God is worthy I said God is worthy I said God is worthy he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same he's worthy to be praised and the devil actually thought that we would come in here to pray thought we would just have church as usual the devil actually thought that because we had to switch it up that we wouldn't give God the praise I see every one of y'all in the spirit and I'm giving God praise for every one of you that he's brought through he's brought over he's took around he's helped you step over he's helped you step on he's helped you walk through so let everything said come on let everything yes let everything yes I said let everything turn your house into a praise party turn your job into a praise party turn your car into a praise party turn your patio into a praise party get up out that bed and stand on your feet and lift up your hands and declare I I made it. Through the storm and the rain, I made it. Through sickness and pain, I made it. Through heartache, I made it. Through rejection, I made it. Through COVID, I made it. Through cancer, I made it. Through unemployment, I made it. Through a layoff, I made it. Through a divorce, I made it. Through bad times, I made it. Through depression, I made it. Come on, write in the comment. Come on, let your hearts go on face.
Facebook. Give me some hearts on Facebook. Give me some hand claps on Facebook. Give me some waves on Facebook. On YouTube, right, I made it. On the website, text somebody, I made it. Because God's been good to us. God has blessed us. God has made waves for us. God has restored us. And today, we've come to serve notice on the devil. We didn't come this far to not give God the glory. We didn't come this far not to give God the praise. We didn't come this far not to be thankful unto God. We didn't come this far not to bless his name. We didn't come this far not to lift him up because I don't feel no ways tired. And if God never left me, I'm not going to leave God and I'm going to give God He's worthy. Anybody know he's worthy? Write in the comments, worthy. Come on, write in the comments, worthy. Write it in caps, worthy. God is worthy. It's, it's just good to be alive. I said it's just good to be alive. We, I said it's just good to be alive. See, the devil thought because we had to go to virtual only that we were going to come in here sad and depressed and disgusted. He thought because there weren't going to be a thousand people in here that we weren't going to bring the funk. But the devil forgot for two years. It's just been me and the crew. And we learned a long time ago how to give God the praise with pews empty all around us. So in this sanctuary, we gonna give God the praise. And I want you to turn your house into a sanctuary and give God. Somebody say, why are you holding the mic out? I'm holding the mic out because I'm expecting you to scream in your house. I'm holding the mic out because I'm expecting you to scream in your car. I'm holding the mic out because I'm expecting you to scream on your job. It's just good to be alive. It's, it's good to be in the house of the Lord on the last day of the year. And anybody got a good praise in your spirit right where? Anybody got a good praise in your spirit? Anybody got a good praise in your feet right about now? Come on, don't wait till party time tonight. I'm going to give y'all a few minutes right in your house to give God a good Holy Ghost dance because through January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December, God kept you. So go ahead and give God.
because your house made it. Some business owner ought to shout because your business didn't go under. Some COVID survivor ought to give him praise because he brought you through it. Somebody that dealt with unexpected death ought to shout because when you thought you'd lose your mind, God has helped you keep your mind. You ought to just give it to him. should be ending 2021 to go into 2022. We shouldn't wait till the clock strikes 12 to celebrate what God is going to do. We got to celebrate right now. So in 30 seconds, let's just take 30 seconds to thank God for 2021 and we going into 2022 on the show. to serve notice on the devil that this joy we have the world didn't give it to us so because the world didn't give it to us having to rearrange the service ain't gonna take it from us because we've got joy unspeakable joy <laughs> if I were you I'd find somebody. Don't holler like that. That's real charismatic. It'll get bad in here. Woo! The Holy Ghost is in this place. Y'all ain't got nothing else to do. It ain't time for your New Year's Eve party. Go on and give them about 90 more seconds and just somebody in your house need to go ahead and stand up and give God a good praise. Yes. mercy Lord have mercy the Lord <laughs> the Lord is in this place 
and I hope you're ready for worship. You better get you somewhere where you're undistracted, where you're undeterred. I better get a praise team a minute to get to catch their breath. <laughs> I hope you are somewhere where you are undistracted, undeterred, because I'm telling you, for the next hour and a little bit of change, it's about to be amazing. I'm telling you right now, this is about to be something the devil thought he would steal our joy because we had to switch things up. But the devil must not know about us. We, we don't worship things, we worship God. And because God is still God, we are gonna give him the glory. Praise team, y'all ready? Hey, you know what you need to do. Tag somebody, text somebody, tell somebody that the New Year's Eve Bethel Day Experience is on and popping. Come on. Hit your share button on Facebook, YouTube, website, text somebody. Tell them y'all better tune in because it's about to be absolutely amazing. Praise team, come on and bless us and get us started. Come on, right where you are in your home. Come on, let's get up and do the island groove. Come on, let's go there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, here we go. My hope is in you. I trust in your unfailing love. Our strength is renewed. You reign. in you, in you. I, trust. I trust in your unfailing love my strength it is renewed yeah. you reign forever I will run and hey. I will walk in my faith
you to get that kick that back up for me one more time that father you are my joy is that the first one father you are my peace then father you are my strength you are my everything that's all I want you to get but now y'all got to slide into that last part oh you never let me down oh no 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 that's my favorite part y'all cheated me so I want y'all to get it in your house come on I want you to act like you're right here in this sanctuary Father, you are my joy. Father, you are my peace. Father, you are my strength. You are my everything, huh? Father, you are my joy. Father, you are my peace. Father, you are my strength. You are my everything. Now, here's what I want you to do. You are going to be the affirmation like the praise team. So every time Stephanie yells that, they gonna say, hey, is that what y'all saying? And I need y'all to say that at home because you are in agreement. Then we're going to rock out and jump up and down on you are my everything. Then we're going to slide into, oh, you know. I know you're tired, Stephanie, but God's going to give you strength in the name of Jesus. So here's what I want everybody to do in your house. Come on, get up off your feet. Get up out your seat. It's about to go down. And I want you to get it with us right here. Everybody, joy, peace, strength. He's been that for you all year long. He's been your joy. He's been your peace when you want to cuss some folk out, slap some folk, walk away from them. He's been your strength when you went through some stuff you didn't think you were going to make it through. I'm talking to somebody this morning, this afternoon, that can say, God, I went through some stuff. I should have lost my mind, but you were my joy. You were my peace, and you are my strength, and I'm going to give you the praise. So stand up, and let's get it with the praise team. Come on, everybody, everybody.
what's up listen right in your house I need you giving God a good praise because you know that he is your joy he is your peace and he is your strength that ought to be enough to make you shout right there listen I got to give some love uh, to the praise team and, and to our band you know it, it would have been easy uh, pastor after prayer the covenant brothers all of us got together and you know we were like well I'll do it if you do it and then the other one was like mm -mm, I'll do it if you do it because we were all trying to decide if we want to go virtual or not Sap and Murphy and Pastor Brian and Pastor Matthews and so when one of us did it all of us said no it would just be the wise thing to do now um, I am not suggesting uh, that anybody that is still having service in person is not exercising wisdom that's not what I'm suggesting because you have to do as a leader you have to do what God speaks to you about the house where you lead so I'm not suggesting that anybody that's having in-house is not practicing wisdom but what God spoke to me about this house was to exercise wisdom see I'm a firm believer I'm not one of these spooky you know we got this spooky church now I'm a firm believer that there's some things God just gives you sense well you ain't got to go into deep prayer it's just sense and when we looked at the numbers uh, and how they are we're over like 26 percent positivity probably higher now and it's going they said it's going to get worse after the holiday yeah they said i talked to a medical professional yesterday who said a wave is coming that we have not seen yet it just made sense to shut it down but man our, our praise team jeremy was with his family his his uh grandmother died and then he he came back today he, he rolled up on us but Man, the praise team galvanized and the band, you know, Quinn kind of jumped on it and, and it, you know, and Jerome and his team, they were here last night to make sure that excellence is still what we give God today. So when I call Hez, that's Bishop Walker for y'all, he's Hez, we family. Uh, and I said, Hez, I said, man, listen, he said, you ain't got to say nothing, bro, because I'm shutting my service down too. So Bishop Hez even shut his service down. So now you know if he shut his service down, I was not about to ask him to get on a plane to come here. He was quick to say, mm -mm, I understand. We'll make it up in the year, sometime in the year. And so it was just wisdom on our part to make sure that we did that. But listen, that word is still the same. That word I'm going to preach to, ooh, that word I'm going to preach is going to be apt absolutely amazing so uh i want y'all to just give some hearts and some claps to my team our team today that's our praise team praise team leader jeremy our band uh and, and quinn and jerome and uh our, our audio visual team our trustees are here our sextons are here jocelyn and her team they are here i need y'all come on give some hearts to the team that makes this work i need y'all in your comments right now because i'm telling you right now they rescued my soul for this new year's eve service i need y'all to give them some hearts right now and give some hearts to my lady because she's been praying me through i know her well enough to know she hadn't said much but she's been on the altar praying for her boo so y'all give some love to our executive pastor our first lady for holding me up and keeping me keeping me sane these last few days i've been hard to live with y'all these last few days it's been rough not but while we're doing all the kudos what can we not do is not give kudos and prayers and adulation for our pastor our visionary our under shepherd come on we want to see y'all clapping in the comments for bishop rudolph waldo mckissick jr because without him we would not have any worship without him we would not have no creativity without him we would not have everybody in here to come together to give us this awesome worship experience so bishop we thank you for standing strong and for standing tall through it all and for bringing us through these 20 something months of this pandemic bless you baby thank you so much listen this has been an amazing year god has has called and allowed us to do some great and marvelous things 
great and marvelous things and all year long that countdown was awesome that Jocelyn and her team put together because it showed you what we've been doing all year and what we stand for it's just been a tremendous blessing and uh, the Lord laid something on my heart before I forget I hadn't even told you this I talked to Bishop about it the Lord laid my, on my heart to do something tonight at 11 30 at 11 30 um i just need you to you know smile when i say all this we're gonna go over to mom and dad's house we're going to go live at 11 30 and uh come on fix your face because i know your eyes and uh we're going to pray we're probably about 11 40 we're going to go live i'm going to ask everybody to meet us at 11 40. i thought you were going to say we were going to have dinner no we're not doing that 11 40 we're going to do that at 6 30. at 11 40 tonight Bishop and I are going to give final words of 2021 and then we're going to pray everybody that wants to meet us y'all know we don't do this we didn't, even before the pandemic we didn't do that traditional in church at midnight that's just not I don't knock it you know because that's what a lot of people do that's just not been our tradition uh, and so tonight though the Lord laid that on my heart join us online at 1140 tonight 1140 tonight we're going to give some final words and then we're going to pray as we're going uh, on 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 the pages on all of our pages so Jerome if you're listening I'm going to do it through the switcher so we don't have to worry about anything it will be on all um, all of our platforms all of our platforms at 1140 tonight join us for prayer as we go into 2022 but listen this is the final offering of 2021 the final offering i saw one one pastor had he was just keeping it real you want your last tax break of the year i, I saw that on somebody's page that's a reality but listen I, I, i've been in prayer the last 24 hours about this offering how the lord wanted us to do and then when we had to switch to virtual i was like lord how am i going to do this and the lord said to me son their giving ought to be on their obedience, not because they're in a room. So you do what I told you to do. I'm asking everybody, everybody, everybody to sow a $220 seed, $220 seed. We're going into 2022. Everybody, a $220 seed. It's just a seed of thanksgiving. There's nothing attached to this. There's no promise attached to this. There's no in seven days you're going to get a call. This is just a seed of thanksgiving for keeping us. And a seed of faith that 2022 is going to be a year blessed even beyond 2021. $220 seed. Production room, please put uh, all of our giving platforms up for me. Thank you so much. $220 seed right now I want you to sow that it's just God I thank you for keeping me and I sow this seed in faith that 2022 is going to be even greater than 2021 our trustees believe it or not are here and as I can see outside there are people actually bringing their their offering up to the church and so if you want to bring your offering up to the church you can bring that up right now you can bring it right now but i'm asking everybody a 220 dollars seed of thanksgiving and faith thanksgiving for this year faith that's to 2022 is going to be absolute i'm not going into all that you know i have not seen all kind 2022 is the year of double because two i'm not going into all that foolishness but god's going to bless you even greater that's what i'll say so 2022 is going to be the year and so I'm asking everybody, $220 seat. Sunday is the first Sunday of the new year. Praise team, y'all ready for Sunday too? Praise the Lord. I'm starting a series on Sunday that I believe is going to be the most important series I've ever preached because I'm going to be in this series for most of the year. For most of the year. I'm starting a series Sunday called I Dare You. That's the series I'm starting Sunday. I dare you. Dare, D-A-R-E, stands for doing all, risking everything. That when God...
calls you to do something, what God is really saying is, I dare you to trust me. I dare you to step out in faith. I dare you to believe that everything I said, I'm going to bring it to pass. And when God says it, I'm going to do it all, risking everything. I'm declaring, I'm going to go ahead and say it now. 2022 is going to be the year I take the dare. It's going to be the year of the dare. Yes, y'all better hear me. 2022 is going to be the year you dare to believe your marriage is going to be better. You dare to believe your business is going to take off. You dare to believe you're going to go back to school. You dare to believe you're going to get that degree. You dare to believe y'all are going to get pregnant. You dare to believe your child's grades are going to improve. You dare to believe you're going to get out of debt. You dare to believe debts are going to get canceled. You dare to believe that tumors are going to shrink. You dare to believe that the doctor's report is going to be reversed 2022 i better stop because i'm getting excited 2022 is gonna be the year of the dare i dare you i've never been i'm so excited about this series i've already written all the sermons for january and i'm telling you now you're gonna hear me in a way you've never heard me i dare you I dare you to sow that $220 seed right now. I dare you to go sow it right now. I dare you. And God said, if you take the dare, I'll open the windows of heaven. <laughs> and I'll pour you out a blessing you won't have. I dare you right now to give. I dare you to be obedient and watch what God's going to do. $220 seed. Praise team, y'all. Should I just go ahead? It done, it done got kind of rough in here, y'all. It, it ain't but about 15 of us in here, but I, I dare you to stand up in your house right now and act like ain't nobody there but you and God and give God a praise for 2022. I dare you wherever you are right now. I dare you on your job listening in your earphones. I double D dog dare you to just start waving your hand, believing that 20. 22 is going to be my year. I take the dare. 2022 is the year of the dare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the year of the dare. It's the year of the day. Come on, let's go ahead and get in this word. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. I hope you feel it wherever you are. It's, it's good. It's mighty good in here. It's mighty. It's mighty good in here. Boy, y'all getting on. Y'all getting excited about Sunday. Y'all already writing it in the comments. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. Woo, Sunday going to be rough. I dare you. I, I dare you to believe he's going to bring you out. I dare you to give him praise. I dare you to shout with your broke self. I dare you to scream with your sick self. I dare you to smile with your... I, Shall I dare you to give him praise with everything you done been through in the last month? I dare you to lift your hands and give him praise. Dare me, I dare you to praise him even though you had something this week that you had to go through with your family. I dare you. I'm just getting all the way into my Sunday sermon. I dare you to just thank God right now that in the midst of whatever you're going through, God is still blessed. I dare you. I got you. As a matter of fact, some of y'all ought to say, God, I dare you to bless 
me God I dare you to bless me God I dare you to bless me God I dare you to help me with the business God I dare you to save my children God I dare you to restore my marriage God I dare you to shrink the tumor I with me now my Savior I come we don't do old school no more to I need thee we don't do this old stuff no more oh I need thee y'all better leave me alone in here I need, 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 need thee. Oh, bless. I dare you. Bless me now. My shame. Shame. I come. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. I come yeah, to to thee. John chapter 5. I come to John chapter 5, verse 1. Ah, glory, I dare you. Woo! Woo, doing all risk. I'm not even preaching that today. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Consecrate my mind and my thoughts and my tongue and my mouth. My body, stand up in me. God, somebody needs a miracle right now. This word is going to be the word that breaks some stuff over people's lives right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Woo, John chapter 5, verse 1. Come on, you. Y'all still got time to hit the share button for somebody. John chapter 5, verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who had been there, an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? I think uh, production room, I'm going to stop right there. Do you want to get well? I, I, I want to preach. <laughs> I want to preach this morning or this afternoon, this last sermon of 2021, a perfect day to boss up the gospel according to Rick Ross a perfect day to boss up the gospel according to Rick Ross one of the best books I, I have ever read was one given to me not too long ago by Linwood Marshall it was written by that famous hip hop mogul and rapper we call him Rick Ross, but if you're really hip-hop, you call him Rosé. The name of the book is the title of this sermon, The Perfect Day to Boss Up. 
Ross talks about the day he learned about the coronavirus as he was getting ready to travel to Mexico. And he talks in the book, particularly in the early portions of the book, about how uh, after being warned by flight attendant that he shouldn't go to Mexico because if he goes to Mexico, he's going to get stuck there after making a reservation for he and his crew in Miami to hang out in a hotel. He decided to go back to what he called the promised land, which is his mansion in Atlanta, the former home of the heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield. Ross bought the mansion and it's over 235 acres off of auction after the home went into foreclosure. He tells the story and I, I would encourage everybody to go get this book. He tells the story of how he went to his mansion as the place he would hold up until the virus let up. And while there, he decided that he would cut his own grass because he had learned that Holyfield owed over a half million dollars to a landscaping company when he lost the house. And Rosé said he was determined that he was not going to put himself in that same oppressive financial condition. This, this multi-million dollar hip-hop mogul began to cut his own grass. He said he went into the barn and noticed all of the mirrors on the wall and was told that this barn was the place where Holyfield sparred and got ready for all of his fights. So he turned that into a studio. He said about this pandemic, and I quote, no matter what challenge this pandemic presented, I was going to go with the flow and adjust accordingly. I was going to find ways to win regardless. He went to every place on the property trying to figure out what he could do. There was a baseball diamond. There was a pond. He went to every inch of the property on the, the moor that he was riding trying to figure out what he could turn each area of the property into to make money. He said again at a time, listen, when the whole world was on standby and nothing was happening, it was becoming clear what things needed to happen. And here's the part that got me. He said, and I paraphrase, the last time I was in this position, Ross said, the last time I was stuck at home, the last time I was in the position of being locked in my house, was in 2015 when he was under house arrest. He said the entire world was outside making moves beyond my gates and I could not do anything. He said, but this time <laughs> the world is on lockdown, but I am not going to miss an opportunity to do some things for myself in spite of the current condition of things. I'm not going to let the lockdown keep me down. And that thought became the perfect day to boss up. In other words, it was the perfect day to make a decision that you don't have to succumb to your situation. It was the perfect day to decide that what you are dealing with does not have to become who you are. It was the perfect day to make the choice that he didn't have to just sit there and do nothing satisfied with feeling justified. It, it was a good day, the perfect day to boss up. Rick Ross, Rose, for him, bossing up was not simply about earning more money. No, bossing up was about a way of thinking. It was about changing how you think about where you are and what you're able to do. Somebody ought to write in the comments, I'm getting ready to boss up. 2022 is my year to boss up. And I believe, I believe that's what Jesus was trying to get this man to do in the text. Now, I've, I've preached this text probably more than I've preached any other text in my 30 plus years of pastoring and preaching. But God took me back to it and took me into a deeper and different study of it and showed me some stuff that I think can help us boss up for the next year. Here we find a man at a pool called Bethesda. 
It was a set of five porches that sat right outside the gates of the temple. It was near the area of the sheep herders where they would sell lambs for the Passover sacrifice before people would go into the temple. And the story goes that occasionally an angel would come and stir the water. And whoever got into the water first would be healed on that day. Now, we don't know if that's true. We don't even know if anybody ever got a miracle. The Bible does not say. As a matter of fact, if you were reading with me in the New International Version, you will notice that the verses that talk about they were waiting on an angel to come down for the troubling of the waters are not even included in the New International Version. In honesty, they are not included in most translations beyond the King James Version. Most translations take out that part about an angel troubling the waters because it was just a rumor. But how many of y'all know when you are desperate, the rumor is enough to make you spend your life waiting on it? Jesus. Everyone there is disabled and have no options but to all be brought to this one space. And for many of them there, this was the last chance they had for getting their life into a better place. This man has been coming there, it is believed, longer than anybody else. And on this day, for some reason not explained, Jesus shows up where he is. Y'all don't miss your first shout. They can't go to where Jesus is. So Jesus comes to where they are. How, how many of you today by showing up your hearts or showing up your hands on online, how many of you today are thankful that there have been seasons and moments of deliverance that only happened because Jesus came to where you were in some form and got you out of something? How many of you can just, you don't even have to go back long. How many of you can just think through this past year when you weren't thinking about doing that better? You weren't thinking about getting up out of that toxic relationship. You weren't thinking about trying to leave that situation when you weren't thinking about trying to get sober but how many of you can testify today that Jesus didn't wait for you to get up because you didn't even know how to get up so Jesus came to where you were and the only reason you got delivered is because Jesus didn't wait on you to get it together he showed up where you are here's this man and Jesus steps over people <laughs> and chooses him God this is about where I wish I had a thousand of y'all in here because I want to tell somebody right now get ready for the Lord to choose you get ready for the Lord to put his eyes on you 2022 while you've been waiting on some stuff God's getting ready to choose you and he comes to the man and says do you want to boss up do you want to be made whole? Do you want to boss up? And it's interesting to me, Desmond, that, that the man didn't say yes. Now, that which you claim you needed, he said, I don't have anybody. That which you claim you had to have to get where you needed to be is standing in front of you. And you don't say yes? It's my estimation that when Jesus asks the question, God, this is going to get good. Jesus is trying to see how much damage Bethesda has done to him as a result of continued disappointment. What Jesus is trying to check out, Jesus, is how disappointment has damaged his mental because here we go Bethesda is a trap that will trick you huh okay um um he said I have nobody to put me in the water because an angel comes and troubles the water and as soon as the angel is troubling the water the first one to get in is the one to get delivered but that's the is a trap because it's a place that's promising something but it fails to deliver it Jesus 
Bethesda is rigged for failure. God, I've been waiting to preach this. It's promising those there a miracle, but the miracle is never coming. It draws you in with the promise of breakthrough and change, and it can be your turn next, but it never happens. And some of you have some Bethesdas you're dealing with. For some of you, your Bethesda has been some preacher making promises to you. For some of you, your Bethesda has been a marriage that you thought was going to be better or worse. For some of you, your Bethesda is a job you thought because you had a new start with fresh money things were going to get better you all have some things we've all had some things that made promises but it didn't deliver but there's this a trap and I submit to y'all this man is stuck he isn't just stuck physically we know that he's stuck mentally emotionally circumstantially relationally because he, he went on to explain to Jesus, God, it's going to get good. He went on to explain to Jesus how things work around here. He said, around here, we have a system. <laughs> and because of this system, I'm stuck where I am, Jesus. This system says you got to have water troubled by an angel and this system says you got to be in the front of the line and because that's the rules of the system I don't have what the system requires for me to stop being stuck Jesus help me right here um, he, he says he, we have a set everything works on a system goals get achieved by implementing systems the man said I'm stuck because of the system I'm operating under and it has now, watch this, turned into system thinking. Jesus. And if you aren't careful, boy, this is good. If you aren't careful, a system will organize your stuckness. So I need this. And I need this, and I need this, and I need this. And because I don't have this, and because I don't have this, and because I don't have this, now my stuckness is organized around my excuses. Preach Rudolph McKissick. You've got organized stuckness. This man is caught up in organized. Let me help some of y'all, because some of y'all saying, what does that mean? How do I know if I'm in organized stuckness? When you get offended at how others seem to think how simplistic your problem is, and you give complex complicated answers to simple questions when you've always got your excuses for why you can't do better organized stuckness when you're always ready to talk about who won't help you why they won't help you what you've been through who did it to you organized stuckness see some of y'all listening to me you've got highly organized problems now it's in your thoughts it's in your habits you 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 can't see it because you're living in it and it's it's so organized that now you justify it so now you have organized worry organized stress organized shame organized guilt organized failure organized drama some of y'all are stuck listening to me right now you're stuck in but i came to make a declaration today is the day you step out of stuck who am i talking to right now i came to serve notice on you you've been stuck long enough your stuck days are over and today is the day you step out of stuff as a matter of fact if you're home i need you to act like you're here and get up off your couch and just take a step and if somebody say where you're going tell them i'm getting stuck i'm getting steps out of stuck come on right now wherever you are i know you may look crazy i know your spouse may ask you what you're doing but tell them today is the day i step out of stuck I will no longer be stuck emotionally I will no longer be stuck mentally I will no longer be stuck financially I will no longer be stuck circumstantially I will no longer be stuck relationally I will no longer be stuck spiritually 2021 yes has been a stuck year but in 2022 I'm stepping out of stuck and you want to know why I'm stepping out because it's the perfect day for me to boss up. The devil should have killed me when he had me stuck. The devil should have taken me out when he had me down. But December 
this in the year of our Lord 2021 is the perfect day for me to boss up and get out of stuff you ought to write it in the comments. I'm, I'm stepping out of stuck. Come on, write it down there. Sir. I'm stepping out of stuck. I'm talking to black folk who've been blaming the system. And I know the system is rigged. I know the system is bigoted. I know the system is prejudiced. I know the system ain't for us. But I'm looking for some black folk who can say God's got power over a system. And I'm stepping out of stuck. Woo. This is my last day. This is my last day of being stuck. Bishop, how do I get? How do I get out of stuck? How do I boss up? How do I, how do I answer the question Jesus asks properly so that 2022, I'm able to accomplish my goals and accomplish my dreams and be a better person than I was in 2021. Just three quick things. Number one, stop discovering comfort in your condition. Okay. Y'all ain't gonna see this, and this messed me up. Um, Bethesda, Pastor and I've been there two or three times. We walked Bethesda, but in, in its original day before it was kind of torn apart, the scripture said it had five porches Jesus is gonna get good and these porches had colonnades that's what the scripture said hmm. and I, 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 I meant to get a picture for them to put on the screen for you to see that these columns were huge y'all don't see me coming and the columns offered shade to anybody that was laying standing or sitting on the porches y'all don't see me coming so you're there at the pool <laughs> waiting on the troubling of the waters in the heat of the day but the heat doesn't bother you because the columns are blocking the heat y'all don't see it so the shade offered you comfort while you waited on the water so I don't have a problem coming back to my dysfunction every day because I got columns that's going to keep me comfortable while I wait. Jesus, help me preach this. Hum, hum. They make me comfortable in my condition because columns create comfort. Okay. He sits with the sun blocked so the man was never made to feel uncomfortable going back every day to the place of his dysfunction Jesus who am I talking to you've built columns in your mind to protect how you feel I told y'all didn't see me coming you've created columns in your mind to make you comfortable being lazy. You've created columns in your mind, Jesus, to make you comfortable being trifling. You, you've created columns in your mind to make you comfortable not being all the way there in your marriage. Y'all are awfully quiet and y'all ain't even in here. You are creating columns in your mind. Columns build excuses. Columns build justification. Columns help you feel comfortable in lazy in gossip in selfishness hey your problem might not be your condition as much as it is the columns providing your shade from the heat that would help you get on your two feet because if it was hot enough you wouldn't keep coming back there to deal with the heat while you wait but as long as there ain't no heat on me as long as everybody keeps saying don't pay them no attention that's just them that's a column is, is the mic on as, as long as everybody laughs 
at your childishness, that's columns. Ooh. For some, for some of you people are your columns. They do you like they do this man, pick you up and let you down. They take you to the place of your dysfunction, making you feel like going back there every day is normal and okay. You've got to get out of that shade. Some of y'all been in the shade all of 2021. Some of y'all been in the shade all of this year. That's why you haven't changed. That's why you're still doing the same stuff. That's why you're still acting the same way. That's why you're still in the same toxic relationship. Because you've never been made to feel uncomfortable. So when Jesus asked the man a question, it was really Jesus saying aren't you tired of being comfortable in this condition when you decide that you're tired of living beneath God's best for your life you're going to start to tear down the columns that make you comfortable who am I talking to right now some of y'all need to tear down some columns some of y'all need to get rid of the way you're thinking because as long as you're in the shade You'll keep being the way you are. Well, let me let me tell you something else. Um, don't worry, we'll shout for it's over. Um, if you're gonna boss up, not only are you gonna have to stop finding comfort in your condition, you're gonna have to cancel your culture. I ain't talking about black culture. I'm talking about the culture around you, the atmosphere around you. This man has a dangerously toxic support group. He got two, actually. One I already mentioned. One toxic group is the group that keeps bringing him there, leaving him there, not sticking with him there, knowing that being there is not going to make him better. I said too fast. One toxic group is the group that keeps bringing him there, leaving him there, not sticking with him there, knowing that being there ain't going to make him better. They keep... Huh. enabling and assisting in his failure they oh they have become accessories to the system of his dysfunction jesus but then there's the group that's just like him i know y'all give me 10 minutes we gonna shout um there's the group that's just like him all he sees every day are people who are trapped like him All his daily relationships look like his. And what's going to make me want to get better when everybody around me is like me and we can commiserate together? The people he does life with are just as stuck as him. Woo! And all they do all day is talk about how stuck they are. Some people probably died while waiting. And all they do is talk about the folk that died being stuck there. His, his support group is culturally toxic that is now supporting his problem. I know y'all don't like this kind of preaching. Y'all thought I was going to run y'all all around the sanctuary on New Year's Eve. Listen, the more you stay in a problem, the more you distance yourself from people who try to help you. You know you've fallen in love with a toxic culture when you shut down people that challenge you. You know you've fallen in love with your tux toxic culture when somebody texts you back something to check what you text to them and you go silent. It's awfully quiet. People that want you to be better start to irritate you. People that want you to change some of your ways start to get on your nerves. People that want you to be a better version of yourself, you start accusing them of being jealous of you. So now you create a group of friends who are just as stuck as you. So now y'all can worry together, cry together, complain together. Some of y'all are going to remain stuck as long as you remain with the people who are in the same condition as you. 2022 might be the year you got to leave the stuck folk alone. Well, I'm done. We're going we gonna to crank everything up now. Try to say two things. I'm trying to help y'all going into 2022. I know. Um, go, go, go watch some, another service tonight and y'all can run all around church. 
Um, I try to say two things to you. Don't get comfortable in your condition if you're going to boss up. Cancel that culture if you're going to boss up. But here's the last thing that got me. The miracle is in leaving. Huh? Huh? Do you want to be made well? Because your miracle ain't at Bethesda. Jesus. The stuff you've been trying to make you feel better, that ain't where your miracle is. That bottle, that's Bethesda. That's not where your miracle is. That, that illicit relationship, that's Bethesda. That's not where your miracle is. Ooh, it done got quiet now. That, 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 that weed that you have to have because you can't be sane without it, that's Bethesda. Mm, that's not where your miracle is. That, that nasty attitude you have to keep people at bay, that's Bethesda. That's not where your miracle is. Can I tell you where your miracle is? Your miracle is in leaving Bethesda. God, I feel the Holy Ghost about to break through on somebody. Your miracle is not at Bethesda. Your miracle miracle is the ability to leave Bethesda because what Jesus says to him is do you want to leave here and not come back again is there anybody listening to me who can say I'm ready to leave some places and never come back again do you want to leave this place do you want to leave this system do you want to leave this culture do you want to leave this dysfunction do you want to leave that insecurity do you want to leave those suicidal thoughts do you want to leave needing the alcohol? Do you want to leave needing the drugs? Because you've got to leave it to get out of it. Not, not just do you want your legs to work. Because your legs can work, but your habit ain't fixed. So you'll keep coming back to socialize with the folk that are still stuck. It ain't enough to get your legs working. Do you want to leave this place? Because there's more for your life and to your life, but it's not going to come to you. It's not going to happen for you at, but I see some of y'all saying yes. And I, I, I see some of y'all right now. You ought to write, I'm leaving this place. You're going to have to leave that place place see everybody's waiting because they think the miracle is going to be there they're waiting for better days they're waiting on an angel they're waiting on troubling waters but you got to leave there to get your miracle i came to tell somebody god has a next thing for you god's got a better thing for you god's got a greater thing for you but the next thing he has the the thing he has the greater thing he has is not coming where you are you gonna have to leave the place you've been hanging out I came to prophesy to somebody leave it in 2021 and let God take you higher leave every mistake leave every failure leave every bad relationship leave every betrayal leave every disappointment leave every every argument leave unforgiveness leave family fractures leave bad habits leave negative thinking leave inferior thinking leave inferior friendships leave jealous folk why am I leaving because I want what God's got for me next and I can't get it if I stay where I am I came to declare to somebody that 2021 I've been stuck in some places 2021 I've been holding on to some stuff but God let me live long enough for me to get out of my situation so I I didn't feel like I had it but I I got to get out of here y'all but I'm ready to leave and get out of my Bethesda I'm ready to leave and get to something greater because I, I I heard Jesus say come on 
unto me all ye who are weary and heavy laden and I will I will give you rest he said take my yoke upon you and learn learn of me I got to get out of here I ain't said this in a long time Quinn let's ride happy new year everybody may the Lord God bless you real good but is there anybody in here who can help me close this sermon stand in your house stand on your job get on your feet and declare right now that this is the day God brings me out this is the day I'm gonna boss up this is the day I'm gonna do better because God has shown up to get me out of where I am I need some witnesses who can write on Facebook that God will get you out God will deliver you God will make a way for you God will open doors for you y'all know what I want you to write I want you to hit that cap button because I want you to write in all caps I want everybody on Facebook I want you to write it Jesus had a question that he asked the man that ain't what I want you to write Jesus asked the question do you want to be made whole I got another question and I want you to write the answer in the comments put it in caps won't he do it <laughs> won't he do it won't he do it won't he fight your battles won't he make your enemies your footstool won't he give you joy and sorrow won't he give you hope for tomorrow won't he dry your tears won't he won't he won't he won't he won't he <laughs> Because I know I don't have to be stuck. Because I know he can deliver me. I'm ready to leave everything behind that's not like him. Because I discovered a long time ago if Jesus will just step in to my life, he'll pick me up and turn me around. I got to get up out of here, but I need somebody who can write in the comments. Leave. That's all I want you to write. Leave. Negative spirit. Leave. Insecurity. Leave. Toxic relationship. Leave. Alcoholism. Leave. Gossip and friendships leave dysfunctional attitude. Leave, and I, I know that if you will just leave, God will supply all your needs. If you get up, take up your bed, and walk your condition walk out of your misery walk out of your depression walk out of your discouragement walk out of your toxicity but don't worry you're not walking by yourself because I heard the old saints say he walks with me joy we share as we tear, tear it there none other has we ever ever known so stand in your house and say leave 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 in the comments.
garments leave 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 i'm done with it i'm done with it i'm coming out i'm not stuck i'm done i'm bossing up i'm bossing up i'm bossing up i'm bossing do you want to be made well or are you just too comfortable because you haven't had anybody to apply enough heat to make you uncomfortable acting the way you do do, do you want to be made well or have you gotten used to just hanging out with folk who are in the same condition as you Do you want to be made well? Because to do that, you got to leave. As a matter of fact, I didn't preach it, but it's in the text. When the religious leaders asked the man, because they were mad that he was walking on the Sabbath, that he had gotten healed on the Sabbath, they said, who did it? Homeboy said, I don't know. I don't know him. The text says, homeboy went to the temple, and Jesus came and found him. Oh, Jesus. He couldn't even find Jesus until he left. Some of you have not yet experienced the richness of relationship with Jesus Christ because of some stuff you won't leave. Some of you don't even know how good it could be with you and Jesus. Jesus says, you can't really meet me till you leave some stuff. For those of you who he's rescued, your, your, your testimony ought to be, God, you rescued my life. You, you rescued me. I, I was so stuck, I didn't even know I was stuck. I was so stuck, I didn't even know this wasn't how I was supposed to be. I'd gotten so used to being stuck, I didn't even know it could be better. But God, you rescued my life. And because you rescued me, there's some things I'm never going back to. There's some ways I'm never going back to. My, my, my prayer for you as you leave 2021 is that you declare there's some stuff I'm never going back to. There are some things I'm leaving. Because Bethesda is a trap and it's a trick because it's promising you stuff that it will never deliver. Praise team, y'all come on up here for me because that's a good way. That's a good way to end 2021 to make the bold declaration that there's some things I'm never going back to. Because the Lord rescued me. He came into my stuckness and said, hey, do you want to boss up? Hey, I'm not here just to heal your legs. I'm here to help you leave this life. Woo! And that ought to be some of y'all's declaration. There's some stuff I'm done with, Jesus. There's some stuff I'm leaving in 2021. I'm I'm leaving some attitudes. I'm leaving some relationships. I'm leaving some ways of thinking. I'm leaving it. Come on, you have. You have rescued my life. That's our testimony. You have rescued my life. Here it life. is. And. And I'm never going back. Can you, can you give that testimony? Tell him you have. You have rescued you have tell him again and I'm never now listen whenever the Lord rescues you you ought to have a response my response <laughs> yeah you're my Response is my response. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're my redeemer. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on.
on, y'all. Let's take it back up top. Put it in three. You have. You have rescued my life. Yeah. You have rescued my life. Tell it. And I. down real quick we go we gonna go out Jeremy I'm gonna throw it to you when we get to the end but listen to me right now Woo! everybody that's listening to me it's time for you to leave some stuff it's time for you to walk away from some stuff you can't meet Jesus until you leave Bethesda because Bethesda has been your God because you thought being at Bethesda was gonna change your life God said, I'm a jealous God. It's going to be me or the other. I don't share. And there's only one way to get to know him, and that's through Jesus Christ. You've got to confess him as your Lord and Savior. And ain't no way in the world I'm going to leave 2021 not being saved. You better hear what I'm telling you. Now be very clear. Salvation is not just so you can go to heaven. God ain't that lonely no salvation is so you can live abundantly for God on the way to God there is an abundant life that you could have on earth there is such a thing called heaven on earth but beloved you cannot have heaven on earth without Jesus in your life Bethesda will never work because it makes promises it can't deliver on so today I would, if I were you, if I were watching right now, all right, Bishop, I'm giving Jesus Christ my life. I'm confessing he died for my sins. I've been coming to church and I thought that was enough. Bishop, I've been watching you online every Sunday for two years and I thought that was enough. No, I didn't die for you. Watching me is not going to give you salvation, but confessing him will. And if you just declare, Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and that God rose you from the dead and that raised you from the dead and that when you were raised from the dead, you offered the gift of salvation and I receive it into my heart today and I declare that I am saved. If you've never done that, today is your day. Or, Bishop, I've been playing with this idea all year. I, I've been wanting to join your church and I just haven't done it and now you're going back on shutdown so I can't join yes you can Bishop I want to be a part of your church but I don't even live in Florida I, I can't drive to your church every Sunday you don't have to it's called the Bethel experience everywhere and not only that we are creating and we're debuting it next month we are creating an a virtual campus that will allow everybody to be engaged in ministry so if you want to be a part of Bethel or this morning you've never given Christ your life or this afternoon, all you got to do is do what you see on the screen. Text TBC Decision to 54244. That's all you have to do is text TBC Decision to 54244. When you do that, you're going to get a text. The text is going to have a hyperlink in it. I need you to click that link and when you click that link it will open up to a video a video from pastor and I and welcome it will welcome you to the Bethel experience then I need you to fill out the form and uh, after you fill it out and click the form the Beemans, the Beemans, Daryl and Dolores, you will hear from them our AIM ministry or somebody on their team to tell you 
what your next steps hey if you didn't sow that $220 seed put the giving platforms up for me real quick if you didn't sow that $220 seed I want you to go and sow that right now it's a seed of thanksgiving and faith that God thank you for this year but by faith I declare 2022 my stuck days are over don't forget 1140 tonight I want everybody to sign on 11 set your notifications Bishop and I are going to speak a final word of the year over you and then we're going to pray right up till midnight we'll have you off before midnight but you join us pastor we want to wish everybody a happy new year it's going to be an amazing new year. We're going to play for discipline. We're going to pray for creativity. But Bishop, we are not going to be stuck because we are leaving Bethesda. Amen. We are leaving Bethesda. We want our miracle. Listen, Isaiah chapter 55 is what you need to read for Sunday. I dare you. This thing is going to be, it's, I'm telling y'all, Sunday we start the year of the dare. And I am taking the day. Listen, pastor's already said it. We'll see you online again tonight, of course. But we wish everybody a happy new year. Stay safe. Wear your mask. If you go into somebody else's church tonight, that's cool. You can be the only one in there with a mask. You do what you need to do. Please wear your mask. Please wear your mask. Jeremy, we're so glad to have you back, man. Bless God. Pray for you and the family. Listen, we love everybody. Y'all stay with the praise team. They're going to worship us out of here. So the song says, My response is Hallelujah you're my redeemer hallelujah my response is hallelujah you're my redeemer hallelujah can you help me raise it my response Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're my redeemer. Yeah. One more time, say my response. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah.
It lived it in me. 